I've been teaching abroad for a really long time now, and I constantly meet people that are really curious about how you can get into doing it. They hear all kinds of things about teaching is better outside of the United States or even um, most Western countries, teaching in South America, in Asia, in uh, Africa, you name it. There's lots and lots of jobs, either teaching English as a second language or teaching at international schools outside of the country and people seem to have a lot of misconception about conceptions about it or be confused about it or maybe just not even believe the stories they're hearing about how much better it is than back home but i can tell you from firsthand experience that teaching abroad especially in asia where the pay is really high the students are generally motivated hard working and have very good behavior as do the parents it is like a teacher's dream come true and so i thought it'd be really beneficial for me to make a course about uh, teachers that are interested in teaching abroad or aspiring teachers that want to get into the profession but you are dissuaded by all the negative stuff you hear from teachers that say it's not worth it, all the drama that's going on with politics and just all kinds of challenges that teachers are facing. Low pay, difficult students, difficult parents, the list goes on, right? So um, I want to let you know that there is an alternative teaching at an international school uh, most of which are these private schools, a huge network that exists abroad of thousands of schools that pay, in some cases, very well and um, are generally better in pretty much all respects. So um, in this course, I'm going to show you guys how you can get on the path to getting a job at one of these schools um, and just also just tell you why they're so awesome. I teach at one right now in Vietnam. And I've taught at various different schools throughout my career, and um, it just keeps getting better. So without further ado, I'm going to tell you guys everything you need to know about international teaching. Okay. So why is teaching abroad so awesome? First of all, the pay is much, much better than at home in almost every country. Now, in some cases, it might be comparable if you're in another Western country that has a really high uh, cost of living like in Europe, for example, or maybe New Zealand or Australia or whatever. But in those cases, if you're working in an international school, even if the pay isn't necessarily a lot higher, usually the environment will be much better for you as a teaching professional. But I'm going to be talking about mostly places like in East Asia, Southeast Asia, South America, where the cost of living is really low and your teacher's salary will be about the same or maybe more than it is back in places like the US or the UK. I'm from America, I have taught in America, and when I came over here and got my first international school teaching job with very little experience, I think it was my very first job at international school, I made um, a lot more money than I made back in the US, both in real terms and in um, adjusted terms, in terms of like your purchasing power going way up because you're living in a cheap country, Vietnam, has a very low cost of living, and my salary is higher here at the international school I work at than it was back home by several hundred dollars a month, which is huge when the cost of living is so, so cheap. In Vietnam, for example, if you're single, you can have a nice lifestyle for $1,000 a month, easy. And if you're teaching international school, you're gonna make three or $4,000 a month, usually, depending on your credentials and everything, plus lots of benefits like flights home, insurance, a, uh, housing, allowance and things like that. So the pay is much better and we're going to get way more into the details of that later. Respect for teachers is much, much higher than back in the West here in Asia. Uh, the students respect you, parents respect you, society respects you. You have like a, a nice position and it feels good. I mean, it feels good. All that work we did to get to this place, all that work in school, um, getting teaching experience, especially for those of us that have already taught back in the States where we don't really get a lot of appreciation or say none at all in some cases, it feels really good. And um, it makes being a teacher really rewarding. I and mean, that's the reason we get into this job, right? We don't get into this job to get rich, but to be both compensated emotionally as well as financially and get to do the thing that we are passionate about, it's pretty awesome. So um, that's nice. Demand for teachers is much higher than at home. I mean, they really have a strong desire to learn. They want to learn English especially, but all across all subjects. Actually, a lot of STEM jobs, they really, really 
are looking for um, math teachers, science teachers all the time. So if that's what you're um, endorsed to teach, there's lots of jobs for you, all different kinds of sciences, math. I teach personally business and economics as well as history. And sometimes there are fewer job openings for um, the business jobs, especially for teaching business, there are still there's still plenty. I, mean, I have one right now, and they're out there. And if you're open to going anywhere, I mean, if you're open to going pretty much to any country in the world, there are virtually unlimited possibilities and, and job openings. There's tons and tons of opportunities. So it's really easy to find a job. So that's pretty cool. Um, private schools have less administration in general, so we don't have to deal with like working for the government. Back in the States, we have all this stuff going on with politics. We have a liberal administration, then we have a conservative administration. Every politician wants to put their mark on the system and change the standards or change the curriculum or change this and change that. And so it gives you whiplash. I mean, there's no stability. It's really stressful. And you have a lot of pressure on the uh, superintendents of your district, on the principals of your school, and it all filters down to you. And it makes um, it makes the environment really stressful, right? We get micromanaged and morale is really low. And of course, I'm speaking in generalities. I'm sure there are places in the U.S. that aren't totally like this, but I know a lot of teachers. I have a lot of colleague friends. And I haven't met very many. In fact, I can't think of any that just totally love their job, like what they do, like their administration. I mean, some people are just so positive that they go to work every day and they make the most out of it. But um, it doesn't have to be that way where you're constantly overcoming these huge obstacles just to, you know, do your job. Right. Um, so it's really nice. Private schools have less administration and there's just um, you have more free reign in general to teach and uh, do your thing. Now, some schools, there might be less flexibility. But they mostly leave you alone and, and let you do your thing. And I find that that's really nice. And um, for me, I compare everything to back when I was teaching in the U.S. So uh, in comparison, I mean, it's just it's ridiculous how much better it is. So you have more freedom. Students are generally very well behaved. I mean, of course, you have teenagers. Teenagers are humans. And so there are some similarities in every culture. But it's to a much lesser degree. I mean, kids hear that if they rebel, get whipped right back into shape if you um, call them out or you try to, uh, you know, to split them at all, they are really, really good. And it's really easy. I mean, class management here is really easy. And part of that is also because in these schools, these private schools, the teacher-student ratio is really low. It's usually 10 to 15 students. In my current school, I have like seven or eight students in most of my classes. So that helps a lot right there, is making classroom management be easy. So the students are well-behaved. It's not an issue. I mean, that's one of the biggest issues back home. you got 30 kids in class or more and um, they're constantly talking, you're trying to teach, and it's a huge pain in the neck, right? And so most of the things that make teaching um, really challenging and hard are um, either lessened over here or are um, not an issue at all. So teaching abroad is awesome for all these reasons, and I'm gonna go a lot more detail about um, what it's like and how to get these jobs, how to get the credentials, and lots of ins and outs that will really be beneficial to you. So class size is much smaller, I already said. Parents are much more supportive. In general, they really have been trained in their societies to be supportive of teachers and to basically be on your side if you have issues with the students, whereas I found like in the U.S., for example, parents tend to be on their kids' side, so they're always ganging up on the teacher. I mean, make a perfect scapegoat. It's easy to blame us for things, but um, the parents tend to be on your side. It makes a huge difference. I mean, it's so nice to have the support if you need it when um, the kids need help. I mean, because if a kid's acting out and not doing well in school, I mean, we're not their enemies. We're their, their teachers. We're there. We're on their side. We want to help them, but oftentimes it means that the student needs to work harder or needs to change something about what they are doing. So when the parents help you out with that, it's huge. And finally, uh, less paper in general. We don't have to do quite as much stuff because the government's not breathing down your neck to compare results and all this and all that. There, of course, are, there is grading to do. There is paperwork to do. But compared to what I had to do back in the States, it's a tiny fraction. And that makes all the difference because some of that paperwork, like having to submit lesson plans and having to submit lots and lots of um, scope and sequences and planning out your whole semester, having everything, you know, every I dotted, every T crossed and um, <clears throat> having so much stuff like that to do. This cuts back um, on your hourly um, or your weekly amount of work by hours, by many hours. And so this all adds up to basically reduce the stress of your job and allow you to, you know, be passionate about teaching and be a really good teacher.